Money. Money. Today I wanted to talk about 203k rehab loans. Uh, we don't see as many distressed properties out there as we uh, we have since the meltdown. We're seeing a little bit of them uh, clear out, and, and a lot of them are just being held by the banks um, uh, now anyways. But there's still opportunities out there for homes that are in condition distress and could be for many reasons. Uh, maybe somebody lost the home in a foreclosure or um, a, a, some type of process to where they were not taking care of the home. And there's just a great opportunity for you to earn some money. And I like to look at properties that are in a position for a 203k rehab loan as something that you can see that the property has the basic information or the basic um property condition. So there's no structural issues with the property, but it just needs a little love. So your eye might be able to see that a little bit better than the norm. And if you can, it's a great opportunity because you're most likely going to get a better deal because it's not having multiple offers. And in this arena, we know that we're still seeing, especially in our area here, uh, seeing a lot of multiple offers to where there's multiple buyers competing for the same home. So if you find a home that's in a little bit of distress, needs a little bit of TLC, and you've got a way to purchase it and see see how that home can be a better investment for you and you're the only offer, you can get a great deal on it. So I'm going to talk about the 203K Strehab Rehab Rehab Loan at the Federal Housing um, Administration FHA, which is part of the Department of Housing and Urban Development, HUD, has this program specifically for this reason, to buy a home that needs a little work on it and to have a specific loan program for that. So I want to go through some of the guidelines for it. 620 minimum credit score, you do need need a 3.5% down payment. Now that three and a half percent, it actually may get a little bit closer than four percent. Um, there's a there's a, a, a unique calculation that's used, and so it depends on the work that's getting done on the property and how they're going to calculate that. So maybe just plan on a four percent down payment. Then you're going to have closing cost and um, plus the improvement cost. The closing is going to take longer than a typical day closing. Uh, your mortgage consultant should be able to close a loan within thirty days. I would schedule a sixty day closing process at the minimum. Now, you can get it done in 60 days if you, as the buyer, is doing everything that you need to be doing in a timely fashion. If you're delaying things on the loan, then that can push it closer to a 90-day process. Now, the work that's going to be completed on the home, so these are the items. You're buying a home that you really would not want in the condition that it is, but you're doing the 203K rehab loan to get the money to fix the house, The and the, you're rolling that into your actual loan. The work is not going to be completed on the house until after it closes. And then you've got 90 days with your contractor to get that work completed. One loan, maximum loan amount up to $417,000, which needs to include the rehab cost. Payments are made during that 90-day period during the loan, and it it can't be worked where you can't live in the property. So it it needs to be worked where actually the condition of the home allows you to live in that home during that time. Maximum is $35,000 including a 10% reserve. So really the repairs cannot exceed around 32,000 because you need to have that 10, 10% reserve setting aside and remaining, which is going to go towards the principal reduction of your mortgage once the work has been completed. Once repairs are completed, a representative from the lender is going to go out to the property to ensure it's been done correctly and to ensure that you're getting the right work, the work that needs to be done to make it eligible for HUD financing or FHA uh, financing, they're going to have a consultant that actually goes out to ensure the work that you're getting done on the property is the work that's needed. So ultimately, when the house is complete, it follows what the guidelines are going to be required. There is a one-time fee for this loan to cover the representative coming out to the prop- property. Uh, there's also a additional 101.5% construction amount and any additional fees that you have around the appraisal for them going back out to the property to ensure that work's been done. Maybe you've got another $500 in addition to that. So it's going to cost you a little bit more in cost. The interest rate's going to be a little bit higher as well, but I wouldn't be as concerned about that because you can turn around and refinance out of this and get into a better rate scenario. So I would take the highest rate that has the lowest closing cost associated so that you can refinance out of that. Um, the work has to be done by a licensed contractor or a lender approved general contractor um, with a licensed proof of bond uh, is required. And you're going to take two draws of this. So this is something you need to be cautious about when you're talking with your contractors because they're going to receive up front for the material and then they have to wait till the work is completed 
where the rest of the funds are sitting in an escrow account where that's going to be paid out as the work is getting completed. So you have to find a contractor that's be, that's willing to do that. Um, I'm not going to list the eligible versus ineligible products because there's just or work that can be completed. There's not enough time. But basically looking at structural work or items that they uh, are probably most likely not going to go through the approval process when you have that consultant out there. So it's more of cosmetic things, countertops, cabinets, windows, new roof, um, upgrading your HVAC, upgrading plumbing, um, some health and safety hazard things as long as it's not uh, structural is okay. So major construction would not be okay. Remodeling, not okay. If you're buying, uh, we're not seeing as much, as much in this environment right now, but right after the meltdown, there was a lot of builders that just couldn't finish homes. Uh, that would not be allowed. You can't uh, have a home that's not in a position to be, uh, that has not been lived in before to qualify for your 203k rehab loan. Now, um, again, if, if you're thinking of doing this because it's like a mini construction loan, which just basically means that there's a lot of complexity into it and it's a lot more than your traditional mortgage, what you need is you need to consult with your mortgage consultant. Um, I'm here to assist you, obviously. Uh, that's my arena as well as your host here for the money hour. And so I want to be accessible and available to anything that you need. Feel free to give me a call. Uh, but you want to consult and go through the process. And then the first step you're going to do is talk with the actual consultant and have them look at the property. So you're first going to talk with your mortgage consultant or myself to find out if this financing makes sense for you. And then you're going to find a property and immediately get that consultant out to it to see what that property needs to have done to uh, make it eligible for 203K. And coming up next in the money hour, financial planning advice you need to have good advice because this person's going to talk to you about how to save your money, invest your money, and make your money grow. So pretty important as you hear money, money, money. It's all about money when it comes to your financial planner. So you need to know who to pick. Make sure that they're working out for your best interest. And that's why I'm excited to have Janice back in studio, regular contributor of the show and works with a lot of my listeners. Janice Hammond, owner of Sunrise Financial Services, right here on 1150 AM KKNW after this short break. <music> 